What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Amalgam Show. I'm going to be hosting Keenan Johnson alongside Nathaniel Roden. Hello. And Shannon Hegler. Hello. How are we all doing? We're good. Good? We're, We're good. deanless. <laughs> we are deanless. Oh, poor Danny boy. He is crook. He's been popping drugs left and right. God damn it, dude. <laughs> yeah, he's high on that neurofin. <laughs> <laughs> all them good drugs. The Amalgam Show is where we get together and talk about pop culture things we care about. This week's topic is the Marvel MCU in retrospect which means we're going to look at the movies and talk about them is it a good thing is it a bad thing who's to say where to say <laughs> yeah our opinion is gospel <laughs> I'm going to start saying that every time you say who's to say that. <laughs> who's to say where to say <laughs> we're saying it fuck you but first some housekeeping housekeeping there's like one show I listen to they do on like a full on housekeeping bit like there's a full like pre-cut video that they pre-insert. We like, is it housekeeping? Knock, knock. <laughs> um, so, well, we've got a couple of shows that we're launching. We're not sure if we're going to do them yet because we are deanless. So that throws off that part of the spiel. If you have any questions for the show, please comment below and e- email us at amalgams. How? At gmail.com. I hate <laughs> that you've trained me for that because I always say amalgams now, not what I should say, which is Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Oh, and hit the bell. That would be nice. And now, what have we been into this week, guys? That's the quickest that start has ever gone. <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> <laughs> that was just bam, 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 bam. <laughs> done. Uh, it could have... I mean, like... We've probably done it quicker in, like, really earlier videos. Oh, you when I was, like, super doing it really, really Yeah, quickly. I remember that. Because you'd yeah. be like... What's, What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Amazon Show. We're your host, Kenneth Johnson, alongside Nathaniel Rodden. I remember that. And then everyone would be like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, well, chill out. Down. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> so, what have you been into? Shannon can go first. Oh, man. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> no, I've been working a lot. Um, did a bunch of late shifts at work, so I was Ew. at home. Really, with any time to do anything. So, I did two things. One is I got. For some reason, I've been wa- binged watched uh, two and a half seasons of the Dragon Ball Z abridged show. Yeah, I don't know why it just popped up on my YouTube and I just started watching it, and then came to the sudden realization. And it's probably everyone knows this, but I've only watched it in like bits and pieces in yeah. passing. But suddenly realizing like they give Vegeta all the best lines in that yeah. one. It's so good. Yeah, he's just got the best one liners after every punch, after every like everything. He's just yeah. so good. Um, I love that the show has recurring bits. Yeah. Like, the one coming to mind is the androids bit. It's mm-hmm. like, how many were there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Two, can I have three? Three? Is there three? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, it's so good. And then Vegeta's, like, Super Saiyan spiel is another running gag. Yeah. Um, which I just, I just got up to where, like, I just got up to the android stuff. Yeah. Um, which is super fun. I love the running gag of Popo being the real like most powerful yeah. thing ever <laughs> and just like just icing dudes left yeah. and right in the background like they they completely gloss over the garlic junior saga that happens in yeah. between because they're just like no fuck it popo kills him yep um <laughs> and that's great that's yep. fantastic um but that's been what i've been doing in my downtime most of the time i have been playing god of war 2018 yeah not 2005 <laughs> yeah no this is a long stretch from the god of war from from the PS2 and PS3, because yeah. holy shit, that game! It's really good. Isn't it's it? incredible. It's so good. Uh, I don't know where to start with it. Um, so you're Kratos. And you got a kid, and you've moved to Norseland. Norseland. Yeah, Norseland. <laughs> you moved to Midgard, Midgard basically. Yeah. They essentially just call it. Like, yeah, they call it Midgard. Which I kind of like that that region is called Midgard. Yeah. And Greece is Greece. Like yeah, exactly. Um, and you move to Midgard, and the mother of your child, who I still haven't gotten... I, I'm about 10 to 12 hours into the game. Um, and I'm probably only about 3 or 4 hours into the story, because there's yeah. a lot of side content to yeah. do. There's a lot of, like, a lot of hidden chests, a lot of hidden items, a lot of hidden boss fights, like, just a lot of stuff. Yeah. And it, um... Yeah, so you're the, the um, mother of your child has passed away, um, and you're on a journey to take her ashes to the highest peak in the realm. 
Um, that's what she wants. The highest peak in all the realms to have her ashes scattered off of that. Um, and so that's it. That's the, that's the game in a nutshell. Like, that's, that's the, that's that's the, the synopsis. Goal. Yeah, that's the end goal. And it's one of those... Um, it's Sony doing that thing again where they're taking a big budget game but they're giving it a small scale story. Like just a really personal... It's a boy and his father yeah. trying to get their the dead, you know, the ashes of their mother and slash lover. They don't really say wife. Yeah. It's not really implied that they were ever married. But they, they might as well be. Because they, they didn't do it. Like, the marriage. Now that I think about it, it's very much a Bulma Vegeta sort of thing. Yeah. Where he just kind of swoops in. There's a kid and he just kind of like flies in and out every now and then. Yeah. Because like the kid says several times like, oh, you, you weren't around that much and you never took me hunting. But like, the kid, like Atreus is his name. He definitely knows Kratos. Like he knows who he is. He knows he's his father. He's very well. I was when those lines came, but I always assumed that he was always out hunting. Like it never saw that he was an absent father. Just like not always home. As in, like he was out doing stuff, like hunting and doing stuff, and not taking his son with him. And he would come home. He'd sit in the corner. Well, okay. his mother, that's how I saw that. Not yeah. that he been around doing it like Kratos going on his adventure. Because it seemed like because he refers to that place as home. Yeah, like, he does. But I I see it more as like when we when we meet Kratos in the first games, he's he has no home. Yeah, he is the ghost of Sparta. He just yeah. wanders around aimlessly. I see it more as like he he has a place now where he came back to. Yeah, and I don't know what he's been doing all that time. Um. It, it doesn't feel like... Because especially the way that... So, the game does this really cool thing that I love that um, no other game seems to get right, which is whenever you have a game with, like, audio logs, like, things where you're listening to bits of story, yeah. um, there's always this possibility that you'll, like, enter an encounter or enter a cutscene, and, like, and it cuts the dialogue. Forever. Yeah, and you never, you never get the rest of it. Um, so you end up, like, crouching behind a a wall being like let me finish the rest of this story bit and then i'll go do the boss battle um they do this really seamless thing where every time basically the those story elements are are there when you're riding the boat and every time you dock the boat kratos says something along the lines of like boat time is for stories yeah and there he stops and then you do the thing that you want to do on the land and then when you get back in the boat he says now where were we or now about the thing i was saying before yeah and like it comes back to it and it's quite natural it's pretty good like it doesn't feel janky yeah and it's in those bits that i heard things like atreus saying saying things like oh you're not very good at telling stories which makes you feel like at this point in time he's old enough that you'd like you'd think he would have told him a bedtime story at some point i don't think he would have kratos isn't that kind of man and that's what his mum did yeah but that's the other thing of like but surely, like, the mother seems to have been a person who has, in some way, affected Kratos. Yeah. To a point where maybe he would at least make the effort to, mm. at some point in Atreus' life. I, mm, maybe. And so it feels to me like Kratos is not always, has not always been there. It doesn't feel like he was always there. Yeah. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Whether that's metaphorical or physical. Yeah. I feel like part of the thing that intrigues me about the game is that it does open up the thing of like what's Kratos been doing for the past however many years rather than just like oh no he's been sitting in here and like going out into the woods and chopping wood and killing deer for his family yeah. like maybe there's something else he's been doing in the meantime yeah um but the story's incredible the gameplay I don't know about you Kina because I know you've been playing it as well yeah I finished it how did it took how a did long the, time yeah okay. I, I don't yeah. think I fully <laughs> got it still yeah um i didn't feel like i was fighting the system it's just like it was just always difficult to master um because because it is a god of war game i instinctively want to press square to attack that's exactly what i'm running into i'm not fighting the combat system i'm fighting my own memory yeah because like when i'm in a situation where i'm surrounded and there's like sh like shit's popping off my instinct is to mash on the square button yeah and I do that, and Atreus just fires arrows. Yeah. And I'm like, oh wait, no, that's not completely doing useless. But, but yeah, yeah, like it might as well be completely useless. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. At the beginning, at least, yeah. like he's just firing arrows, and I'm like, oh shit, that's right, I gotta hit R1. Like yeah. it's it it is like it's gonna take a while for me to, and it's probably my fault for playing through the God of yeah. Wars before but this. Even like me, I didn't play the God of War games leading up to this. I mm. played them years ago, mm. and I still went to that 
just because of the aesthetic of God of War and seeing Kratos, I'm like, I want to press square. Yeah. Because I played like five games with him doing that. Yeah. And it's just something. And I also came off the back of Mad Max, which has a different um, control scheme altogether. Again, it's just like mm. usually I can jump from game to game pretty easy, but does yeah, this one, same. It, it's, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. I think it's just the you see got you see the god of war on the screen yeah. and you're like instantly like i'm gonna mash square yeah like a gajillion times in this game yeah like nope r1 and r2 now yeah. <laughs> like it's weirdly dark souls in that way um but even like dark souls it's like the other ones and i feel that's a bit more natural but the way that the buttons are like r1 uh, r1 is light r2 is heavy l2 is aim because you can throw your axe mm. which is probably one of the best features in the game oh, it's so good because when you press triangle it comes back like Mjolnir and like the vibration feels great the sound effects feels great Kratos grabbing it it just it's probably what they spent the most time on is just getting that physics down yeah um, and just like you can you can time it right like I've done a lot of times where I've been in a battle where I'm a little bit like oh man I don't know how I'm gonna get out of it so there's someone up high that I can't get to that's firing, like, projectiles at me, so what I'll do is I'll throw the axe at him, it'll knock, like, I'll aim for his legs, yeah. but hit his legs, he gets knocked down, then I get a breather for a second. And then if you, like, tilt the camera in the right way, um, you can basically, like, look at another enemy and you recall the axe, and the axe, you know, based on yeah. physics, comes through the other enemy and you get yeah. to deal damage to them too while it's on the way back. And it does the thing where it does not like a always a set amount of time like if you throw your axe leave it and like walk to the next area you press triangle and you'll have to wait for a little bit like it would be like three seconds later then he'll catch it my favorite part of that is hearing all of the sound effects yeah. of it because like as the axe is coming back you're hearing like kung, 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 and then it comes back to your hand you're yeah. like yeah i just fucked up like a village <laughs> it's awesome yeah no, it's really good like yeah i the game is great looks gorgeous yeah, looks yeah, you fucking incredible. Yeah, um, you've got a pro now, don't you, Nathaniel? Mm -hmm. You should get a copy of God of War <laughs> and play that shit because it's probably gonna look amazing. I'd love to play a game like that. It's been a while since I played an adventure game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And this is like open worldy, but there's a story and there's like a, a thing to go through. And, and like it's really good do. because like scatter your mother's ashes. It's not an uh, end all be all. Like situations like go save the princess is you yeah. can't that has urgency to it. Like you should do that, not run around and cook. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Or stuff like that. Or Skyrim like, oh go save the world from dragons. But, okay, well, but yeah, gonna... oh by the way, there's this dude who took an arrow to the knee, he really yeah. wants to talk to you for yeah. a bit. Like this one has just a good goal of just like just get there. Like it's yeah. not urgent. And the way they back it up is Kratos is like I trace is like, Why are we going this way? And Kratos will be like because we need these items for our journey. Yeah. Like, even if he's serious or not, like, truthful. Because, like, sometimes, like, Atreus is very much, we should help these people. Because his mum raised him to be like that. Whereas Kratos is like, no, stuff for the materials. But because Kr uh, Atreus is there, he's like, no, we kind of should help these people. And, like, so you're doing things that help people. But in Kratos' at least outward mind, it is to get the resources. Or to teach Atreus a lesson about trust. And, like, because there's... Oh yeah, yeah. there's, there's yeah. a couple of early missions where like Kratos is like, oh yeah, we'll help them out, and then you get like screwed over at the yeah. end, and Kratos is like, see, yeah. see, see what helping people gets you, yeah. like stupid kid, yeah, um, and yeah, like and uh, yeah, I, I talked to you before uh, before about how like there's a certain point in the game where I don't want to spoil too much, yeah, but there's a certain point in the game where it opens up and you're like, oh, it's opening up, okay. but then it 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 like there's a realization that happens that like oh it's opening up yeah. and like it doubles down on it you're like oh shit there's like <laughs> like 20 times more stuff in this game than i thought there was and there's way more content out there and i am so hyped yeah. to go through all of it like yeah. just all of it um it, it feels good like like I said, even the combat might be a little bit weird and a little bit hard for my head to get around at the moment. It's it satisfying. It feels good. Yeah. Um, it feels good to rip people's heads off. I'm The skill tree is really good. Like, I've found myself trying to... I'm not saying it's good in terms of, like, a mechanic. Like, I think it's a bad skill tree, like, in terms yeah. of how they do it. But the actual abilities on that tree, I find myself testing out a couple 
and I have I have started to find the ones I like. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, this combination of things is starting to work for me. Yeah, I, for the skill tree, there was a bunch of them that I just didn't get until, like, very late in the game. I'm just like, I don't need these. Like, these don't seem to add to the way I play. Mm. And, like, they just seem superf- superfluous, that word. Um, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, a lot of them I left unchecked, so I was at just accruing experience and point. And I was basically just giving it all to Atreus so that he could be effective. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, upgrading him is the best. Yeah. The second he's effective, he's really effective. Yeah, he's really it's really good, too, because it's a whole game where you've got this, like, essentially an escort NPC, but you're not escorting him. He's doing shit. Yeah. He's firing arrows. He's attacking guys. He's choking motherfuckers. Yeah. Like, he's doing all this stuff, yeah. and it's really helping you in battle, and he's not completely useless. Yeah. You don't have to babysit him. He does things for you. It's great. It's really yeah. good. And you actually, like, I'm starting to like the kid. I do have a problem with the way he's animated or drawn. Something about his face doesn't look quite childlike to me. I can see his that. Face I don't is, agree, but I can see like that. Like, his yeah. face is scarred in a way that makes me look like... it. To me, he looks like it's it's a boy's body with a 30-year-old man's head on it. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. Hold up. It just it doesn't quite... Yeah. But it's fine. Like, yeah. most of the time it does, it's not noticeable. Yeah. Most of the time he's a child. Yeah. But there's a couple of, like, different angles during cutscenes where I'm like, that just doesn't... Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm." What do you think of the... the continuous camera shot? I get the feeling I wouldn't have noticed it if they hadn't said anything. Yeah. The fact that someone said, like, oh, it's all in one camera shot, and it's not. Like, let's let's be honest here. When you die, it is. Like, Hmm? when you die, it is. Oh, what do you mean, like... What do you mean? There, there are cuts. They say the whole game is one continuous shot. There are cuts. Where are the cuts? Like when you okay, I don't want to spoil okay. anything. There, but like, there's no cuts. Like there, are, no... there are cuts to black. There's like yeah, fades to black and then fades out. Yeah, I think that's yeah. about as close as it gets. Yeah, but that's that's yeah. like you can you can. The thing that impresses me more than the continuous camera shot is the no loading. Yeah. Like the whole game just runs yeah. from start to finish. You don't load at all. Sometimes it does the elevator trick. Yeah, but um, it, but even in the elevator trick, it's showing you like a bunch of stuff. Yeah, like it's all intricately designed. There's things to look at because the world's so beautiful. Yeah, like the elevator trick is fine. Hmm. Um, they do the door trick as well. Like it, like yeah. when you hit circle on a door, he kind of stops, grabs it, then opens it. Like oh, that's the load. But yeah. even then, like yeah. the animation of him opening a door is like four seconds and yeah. it's loading this entire open world yeah and it's pretty seamless like there yeah. is the only thing that i have had so far is there have been a couple of times in the game where it's been a bit framey where i can see it dip a little bit yeah but i had nothing crazy when i played when i was going from like big boss fight to the next thing there was one frame rate hitch mm. and that was it the only other time i had frame rate hits was when i was like going back into the game like when i went into I rest just, mode and then booted it back up then going straight into it without like loading it all it's like ah oh, we're turning back on ah oh. i and just then... realized that like so i'm gonna spoil one thing because fuck it like we can't talk about it if we don't but you fight a dragon in this game <laughs> it's like the coolest fucking fight ever it's a fucking, the finale it's so good it's so good and i just realized like thinking back to that because i only really like maybe did that boss battle like two hours ago <laughs> my no no frame rate hitch in that entire battle and it's huge this dragon takes up like most of the screen is fucking like climbing on mountains and fucking you up oh it's so good it's such a good looking battle and there's so many like particle effects going on because yeah. it's an electricity dragon so there's just that and you're creating electricity and it's all like super intense like that is a technical marvel. Kina, Kina, is that the only dragon Please say no. <laughs> I want to fight more dragons. Um, in, in your experience in the story, how many more big boss fights were there like that? Oh, big... Uh, it's weird because, like, they're big boss fights, but they're also framed much, much more differently. Like, that okay. is probably the most God of War, like, old okay. school God of War fight. All right. But the other ones, like, you may be on a big thing and something's been happening, but you're still fighting, like, a humanoid. Okay. Um, but like the spectacle wise yeah there's is still it... many many spectacles good well, good n- not as many as That's the old God of War games yeah. but like they're way 
bigger. There's oh god, but you, yeah, I think yeah, the dragon is the most god of war fight because the cool the way it ends. Spoilers for something we've already kind of spoiled. Yeah, fuck it. It's a dragon. There's it's so a dragon. Good. Dragon spoiler. You kill it. You kill it, and like it's coming down. Like jewels are open, and you. Th- I thought Kratos was gonna run. No, he's the god of war. He stands there, and he stands as the um, the jewels come down, and he just stands right between them, without flinching or anything. And let's, it's like the ultimate, like don't walk, up, like look at the fire sort of move. Yeah, don't look at the explosion as yeah. it's happening. He's just standing there in front of this dragon, and it falls in front of him. Oh, it's so good. Then he goes up and takes a tooth out. Yeah, you just cut his tooth off. Cut the tooth. <laughs> it's so fucking good. That game is incredible, and everyone should give it a shot. And I cannot wait to. I cannot wait to see where the story goes because that actually You're barely is barely anywhere through it. Yeah, like, I know. Yeah. I know. And that's what that's what I love about it is that this game is going to be my game for like a month. I can feel it because I don't have the time yeah. anymore to just sit down and play a video game start to finish over a couple of days. Yeah, I have to work several days a week, but. I'm happy to go home, play it for a couple of hours, do some side missions, do some bits and pieces, and then put it down. That's the one thing that has been hard, is because there's no cuts, because I don't know when I can put it down. Right. It is very much one of those, I just one more thing. I just yeah. one more thing. Oh, yeah. what if I go over here? I just one more thing. <sighs> like, yeah. Like, I did had that last night. Like, I was going to go to bed. Oh, no, it was the night before. Um... Uh, yeah, I was going to go to bed, I'm like, oh yeah, and then like, I'm going to do this one little mission, and then it's born this whole thing, I'm just like, shit, there's yeah. the shit happening. I have a question about it. Yep. Do you, do you have to, so far with um, your progress through the game, do you have to have played the previous games to understand much of the story? No, nah. no, nah. nah, not really. Okay. It's nah. like, I could send you an, the IGN God of War in seven minutes, you'd be perfectly caught up. A couple... A... I, I'll catch up now, by the end of God of War... Kratos has killed everyone. Yeah. Everyone. Um, That's all you need to know. <laughs> He's murdered... Like, so, we were talking about this before, Kenya, yeah. that, like, basically, by the end... Like, if you were to play the God of War games, the only real story aspect that really needs to be covered is that by the end of the God of War games, every single thing in Greek mythology, from the gods to the titans to the monsters, they're all dead. Every last one of them is dead. Kratos has murdered them all. That's what you need to know going into God of War. <laughs> Then you just go in. And now he has a kid. There are a couple of other, like, themes that, like, God of War kind of plays on, like the old ones, that they bring back. So, yeah, if you watch that video, you would be covered. Because there's, like, there's a couple of elements in the old game. There's a couple of little things. There's but I think more the... that they get into. Okay, cool. But I think for the most part, it's For very... the most part, yeah, you could understand that you he's could, a you tragic character. Yeah. Um, yeah. Honestly, I just want to go and play more of it. Yeah, like, that's all so, I want to so do. Why. And I finished it. Like, it's still, and they, yeah, there's so much stuff, and it's good. Um, yeah, I, yeah, no, I'm not gonna say anything. Um, <laughs> good. We'll come we, back next week and do it. Yeah, if you're talk finished by next week, I'd like to do a spoiler cast where we just go through. Hell yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just the two of us, and we can just. Yeah, just yeah, talk about out. that for like hours, but we should we should let Nathaniel speak. Oh no, have you been up to anything else or just No, that's pretty much it. Okay. Like I didn't I did nothing. I watched Dragon Ball Z abridged and then as soon as God of War came out, that has been me since then. <laughs> Alright. Um I haven't done much. Oh, okay, that's my turn. No, <laughs> right, well, I, um, thanks for joining us on the amalgam show. <laughs> I pretty much um I started my new job. How's that going for you? It's good. Yeah. What do um, you do? Like, what do you actually oh, do? Man, the <laughs> the name of it has nothing to do with the actual job at all. <laughs> oh, okay. And we don't make so, sandwich the, okay, the, the title is IT Support Advisor, right? Right. I think my that's the title that I went for, like... Okay. But on the system, it, like, it says that I am a IT Management Support Advisor. What? Yeah. What's like, the difference? I don't know. <laughs> That's the thing. And I'm like, okay, so I'm an IT support advisor. What does that include? I talk to people and send things to them. That's literally it. They'll call up and they'll be like, hey, can I have uh, this book that tells me all the prices um, I'll need to have in my store? And I'm like, okay, yeah, no worries. I print that off, 
Send it to them. They give us a hundred dollars. What store? I thought you were working in an IT place. What? What? Uh, we we work. We we own a grocery chain. Oh. I'm not going to say which one on my phone. But, no, no, of course. Um, no, 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 that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So um, you're just the so IT basically, department for this yeah. other thing. Yeah. Right, got it. You're essentially doing my job. Yeah. <laughs> Someone calls you and goes, I got a problem. And you go, this is how you fix it. Or, oh. I don't know how to fix that. I'll call someone who can. Yeah, exactly. exactly yeah. I'll just put me on hold for a second and I'll just find but someone who can In my experience question. so far, my department does, like, most things. Because mm. I've talked to, like, like, every time I've asked help from an IT guy, or I've seen someone ask help from one of the other IT guys, they just walk out and go, no, no, and then they just walk off. I'm like, how what? What? What is that? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, I really shouldn't be that surprised because every time I've worked in IT, there's always been an IT guy that goes, nah, not touching it, nah, don't want to do that one, no. Nah. And I'm like, dude, it's your fucking job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I don't, I, I can never understand so how they get, get away with it. If I did that, for? I would get fired. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. everyone else can get away with that sort of shit. Why? Um, but. Yeah, my role is very weird and complicated. Uh, most of my time so far, it's not going to just be this, but um, there've been one one lady's been on to have to do the job of four people plus train two newbies. So like, it's been hard for her. But she's like, like the thing is, is that she's been doing all that and she still has time to just chat, chill around, do whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wow. like, wow, this is a really relaxed job. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, this is fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. And to like, just get up and be like, I'm going to go get a hot chocolate. <laughs> See you soon, Debbie. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's, it's awesome. I love it. Um, it's just, a lot, there's a ton of software involved, like a ton. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's this yeah. for this and then that communicates with this but you've got to put it in this first or else it won't actually go to yeah. these ones yeah, yeah it's uh, welcome to working in an office it's, it's just program after program after program and then we also create programs so I'll be helping in software development as um, well and I'm yeah. like I'm not even qualified to do that <laughs> <laughs> but I said so on my resume no I didn't I didn't even say that like, <laughs> they were just like oh uh, yeah also we'll need your help to do this I'm like Okay. <laughs> sure. Now I can sure. put it on my resume next time. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. Um, basically, what we're creating now is a portal to all of our stuff, so that we don't have all these programs. So many. Right. So it's a one-stop yeah. shop. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty. Um, and we also will be using that to sell off to people, so that they can, because we're wholesalers as well, and mm. we've been losing a lot of money to like direct farm mm. to store stuff. Mm. So what they're doing is they're creating this new software. So as they buy the new software, they can order through that to the direct they still get the same price mm -hmm. but we get some of the cut yeah. from direct so it's easier for direct to make more money in quantity mm -hmm. but we get more of the cut from them which means we don't lose out mm. pretty good man jobs are, <laughs> jobs are boring yeah <laughs> <laughs> it really is mm. um but <laughs> other that. than that i've just been watching tv shows movies i don't know which ones <laughs> i all over the shop everyone i because I've been around so many different people, everyone's like, oh, I'm watching this, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I've watched ten minutes of it, and then I go somewhere else. And yeah. Ugh. So it's just been all over the place, and I've been really tired all the time, but... Yeah, that, and you had a squatter, I hear. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and it was me, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I should move out. Um, should really give you some privacy. What have you been up to this week? Hi. God of War. Sorry, with God of War. No, it's really good. Yeah, I finished it. Um, the other thing I did... Um, yeah, it's really good now. I finished it. Yeah. <laughs> Psych traded it back in. Yeah. Um, been continuing watching Jessica Jones season two. It's good. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where like I've been looking around and like, shit, everything got to do with parent-child relationships. Because God of War, Jessica Jones... Yeah, I kind of just pulled that. But yeah, um, what else is there? Just like a bunch of stuff that I consume. It's just like even Superman, Superman of the Child. Like, and speaking mm, of Superman, Iron Man, Batman. Yeah, Iron Man, Spider Man in the MCU, Batman, Robin. Speaking of Batman, and Robin, God of War is the ultimate Batman and Robin game. <laughs> the dynamic of like mm. Kratos being this complete hard ass, cold person, and um, Atreus being the hopeful want to help people kind of guy yeah except it's like if batman and robin are like on a scale of one like kratos is 10 atreus is um 
Robin is one. Like, probably Atreus is one, but Kratos is like fifteen. Mm, like he's yeah. so much worse than Batman. Yeah, yeah. And there are, there are so many little moments in that game where, man, I feel bad for that kid sometimes. Yeah. Like there are just some moments where you're like, fuck, what yeah. happened? Yeah. Ugh. But um, speaking of superheroes, I got read Action Comics One Thousand. Yeah, it is really good. Yeah, um, it's a celebration comic, so it's just like, like, short stories within like an eighty-page comic. Most comics are twenty-two pages, but um, yeah, it's just a celebration of Superman. And the final story sets up the new arc that's about to happen. So, have you heard of Brian Michael Bendis? He did. Just trying to see if he's got anything on your list. Um, not that I can see. He did Ultimate Spider-Man. He's the one who. Like, in Ultimate Spider-Man, it was, like, a huge run. He, like, made a really good run. He killed Peter in that universe and brought in Miles Morales. And, like He's he, that dude. Yeah. Huh, okay. He's done a bunch of other stuff as well, but that's probably one of his best works. Mm. Um, so, yeah, he's now doing Superman. And then, yeah, so he's they're going to take a six-month break. He's going to do his own miniseries, and then going to come back, Action Comics 1001, Superman number one, and then he's going to go for however long he wants on the two books um hmm. so and it's interesting because the final page spoilers for action comics 1000 is uh, there's this guy trying to kill superman and then supergirl's helping um and it turns out he destroyed krypton i'm like okay because <laughs> like krypton's usually dies of natural causes or yeah yeah, yeah. the kryptonians fucking it up yeah as opposed to this monster like oh, i just i destroyed krypton i'm like oh we kind of seen the story but like i i saw it i'm like it just fell flat for me mm. the story i'm um, the beat and it's like oh it might be interesting to see what spin they take on it yeah like if they if they're like you know i did destroy krypton not because like what what if now i'm just spitballing here yeah. what if he didn't like actively do it what if he was passively doing yeah. What if he was the guy that, like, led the Kryptonians down that way of, like, we're going to destroy our own planet because yeah. we fucked it up. That's what Brainiac did in mm. Superman Animated Series. He mm. sort of, because he's the AI of Krypton in that universe. So when he, um, he was just leading them and then eventually uh, jor figured it out. And, like, I don't, he never figured out that Brainiac was doing, but he figured out what was going on. And it was like, ah, oh, and then Brainiac was like, oh, we should definitely fix that. Oh, bye, Kal El. I'll follow you. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll haunt you down, bitch. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's an that's an interesting story. Hmm. Um, and I think that's really it. Oh, I'm glad to hear that the 1000 was a good one. Yeah. That they didn't like fuck it up. Yeah. And like when you're doing shorter stories, and it's got like this is really good st- story. It's like a timeline where. Superman has reached the end of Earth's timeline, end of Earth's time in the universe, because it's the sun, and when it gets too big, it will engulf, engulf the planet, just because that's how suns work. Um, and he's there, like, he's there, um, his Lois is, is uh, got like an immortal drug that she takes, um, and it kind of hinted that she's like, kind of wants to die, because she's been around for so long. Like, this would be, like, 5.4 billion years. Mm. Um, and, yeah, he, he goes back to Earth, it's covered in fire, and he goes back to Mara Park Kent's grave to say his final goodbye and thanks for making me Superman. Oh, that's deep. Yeah. That's like, rough. And it's beautifully drawn, it's really mm. good. Um, that would probably be my favourite story out of that. But other than that, I don't think I've been... I've spent more time in Mad Max... I played that game for like 60 hours and that's it yep God of War kind of took over the world there for the for gamers yeah, yeah. Um, that's it's, pretty much all anyone's talking about right now it's yeah and it deserves to like, oh yeah yeah that game but is... Nintendo Labo came out on the same day oh I've heard nothing about it I think no, one... I used it <laughs> yeah really that's all I know yeah no he's, he's he's like they did like an advertising deal with him okay so he's like straight up doing stuff with them okay um I watched a stream of some people trying to build it. 
Yeah, I saw like seems, it's, yeah. If I, I I'd be too afraid that if I were to get something like that, that I would fuck it up because yeah. I usually fuck up things like that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And and the, like what those stickers things like I would be like oh yeah I'll customize it and then I'd be like wow this looks like fucking yeah, trash. This like dog shit. <laughs> yeah. And why would I ever want to fucking take this out in public? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It seems interesting. Uh, apparently the the real draw here is that there's a lo- there's like software built into the Labo stuff that like allows you to design your own Labo. Like, rather than using the cutouts and putting it together, you make up your own shit and come up with your own stuff. Like, okay, that might be interesting. That might be some cool stuff. Um, but we'll we'll see where it goes. I get the feeling that this will go the way of every other peripheral accessory Nintendo's ever done. Yeah. But it's just like, no, I just want to play the Switch, man. Like, yeah. leave me alone. It's put interesting that in. they're trying it, but... It's crazy. It's a really cool move. Yeah. Um... But yeah, we'll see. Yeah, like uh, my my concern is the durability of that stuff. Like it's, I mean, it is it is like someone pointed this out to me though, and I was like, oh shit! Like it all comes in like the flat pack, and yeah. you pop out the pieces, and you assemble it. Yeah, and then you assemble it. If you break a piece, it's cardboard. Get a box. You've got the stencil. Draw it out. Cut it out. Build yourself a repair piece. Hmm. I, I never thought of that. I was like, that that would actually work. As long as you have the foresight to keep the sensor. Yeah. Because me, my dumbass, would just throw that shit out immediately. Yeah, but like... You, yeah, no, that's... Yeah, like if you've clever. got all the pieces there, you could just cut out your own using another piece of cardboard and repair it over time. My concern is more with like certain ones of them, like the robot and I think the piano and others, they have like, like a nylon elastic band or something. Yeah. When that finally wears out, what do you do? Like, is an industrial rubber band gonna work, or just Could regular one? Them. Yeah, like, what's the deal here? Like, yeah. that's the pe- like those yeah. other periphery pieces yeah. are gonna be harder. But the cardboard itself, make it yourself. Like, that's the whole point, and I think that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. I think we'll probably have like funny Labo stories in the next couple of weeks of people like stepping through it or knocking it over or my dog ate it or whatever other bits we'll and pieces. We'll be above it once. Yeah. My dog ate it, and then I stepped all over my dog. <laughs> <laughs> the dog. Poor dog. Alrighty. Moving on to the topic. What are we in, at? We're... In case you didn't know, a little movie called Avengers Infinity War comes out in Australia this Wednesday. What? Which is Anzac Day, and I saw a news article about some people getting offended by that. The what? Infinity War movie coming? And a war movie coming out on the day we, like, respect our soldiers? Like, it's not that deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think they want to release it on an Anzac Day because it's a public holiday. Everyone's yeah. going to be like, oh, well, fuck. I'm yeah, I've got go fuck all else to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was my plan, but then, you know, it turns out everyone else had that idea, so all the cinemas were booked out. Yeah. Lucky for me, I have... So it comes out on the Wednesday. Um, I work Thursday all day, but in my... Where, where I work, everyone's pretty good with being like, have you seen it? No. Okay, go, go see yeah. it. Before they start talking about it. Um, and so as soon as I finish work at five, I have the Friday off, so we're going directly to the cinema and I'm doing the late night screening on Thursday night. Thursday night. So that's when I'm going to have it done, and I am so looking forward, my tickets are booked, I am in gold class. Oh wow. (laughs) (laughs) I cannot wait. We're uh, going to the cinemas in Newmarket. And we've apparently got really good sound design. Yeah. Which is like, otherwise I would go to like my local cinema, but I'm like, I want that Russo Brothers sound design because mm. did you watch the Winter Soldier in cinemas yes and yeah. like did you have the thing where like like the punches like the arm and the shield and you could feel in your legs yeah 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 that's like a that, shit that, that, that deep more. bass yeah yeah. Like, mm, yeah I need that I want when Vision's head speaking of which the, the sound design in God of War is really fucking good anyway. when Vision's head gets ripped off, off I want to be able to feel it yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, all, that's all I've been wanting to I want to feel it in my soul and in my bones <laughs> since 2015 when that boy was introduced all I've wanted is to see his head ripped off and just that beautiful sound design uh, <laughs> I like Vision I like Vision too but like ever since he was introduced with an Infinity Stone and he said like oh that's he's dead fate yeah. worse than death yeah pretty much <laughs> Um, so that, that's kind of the topic though, isn't it? Yeah, like... We're gonna, we're gonna sort of... Yeah, like... Wh- sit down here and shit talk the MCU for a bit. <laughs> we'll suck a stick, whichever way we go. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> like, it's... Putting this 
perspective, it's been ten years. Iron Man One came out the second of May two thousand and eight. Yeah, almost exactly 10 years, yeah. which is pretty, like... That... It would have been 10 years exactly in America if they didn't, oh, like, bring it back. Okay. But, like, Marvel movies, like, the staples always release that first week of, um... May. May, yeah. Like, Avengers 4 is still slated for that first week of May. Really? Yeah. Oh, man, they're gonna make them wait a year. Oh, oh I think, like, this is backing off because of 3 and 4 were filmed back-to-back. Kind of, the initial vision was that they were gonna be a two-parter. Like, Harry Potter... Deathly Hallows Part 1 and Part 2. Mm. But ever since movies like Allegiance and Mockingbird and a lot of other two-parters have just not been doing well, they're like, we're not going to do that. But I thought it still is. Like, is there an Infinity War and then there's a second part to this? It's... They've been really weird about it because it's not like... It's not like Mockingbird where it's, that movie leads straight into like... I, did the end of Mockingbird, is there a cliffhanger? Like, I don't remember that. Yeah, okay. Well, Harry Potter oh, okay. 1, I can probably okay. do Harry Potter easier. That ends with, like, there's still story to go. Mm. Um, what the, the directors have been saying is that Infinity War will be, will ha- have its own contained story. Okay. That will lead into Avengers 4 pretty directly. But... Because he... they compare it to the same way Civil War goes into Infinity War. Right, but yeah. it will give it will give them breathing room to release some other movies in the yeah. meantime. Right, that actually makes more sense because that was actually part of my fear for Infinity War is that a bunch of people are going to leave the cinema like, oh well, I guess we just wait a year then. Hey, yeah, like, like, like that when of... Hobbit two came out, the final shot is yeah. now going towards the thing, and then it just cuts. So I'm like, <clears throat> huh, that's a weird place to cut it. Like, yeah, I'm so used to movies being contained. Like it's probably a good marathoning experience, but mm. as waiting for it to come out, I'm like this isn't fun. It was a bad ending. Mm. Yeah, well, I think it's a t- topic for another time, but I think cliffhangers are a, are a dead art. I think, mm. yeah, I think the art of the cliffhanger has been lost for several reasons. I don't mind, like, threads still being open. Mm. Like, probably one of the best cliffhanger ever done is Empire Strikes Back. Is just, oh, Han's dead, Darth Vader's his father... What the fuck does this mean for everyone? Yeah, but that's... Cut to black. Yeah, kind of. I, I think I think there's still... It's less of like... It's yeah. not a, a normal, like, cliffhanger, but it is like... Yeah. yeah. I don't have a problem with cliffhangers. I yeah. just... I... Yeah. I, Neither, to- I don't, but like... Topic for another time, I think. Yeah. Of like, <laughs> dissecting the art of the cliffhanger. But we should talk about the movies themselves. Which ones have you seen? All of them. Which ones have you seen? Which ones haven't you seen, rather? Probably a smaller list. Yeah. I haven't seen... Ragnarok, I haven't seen Dark just... World, I haven't seen Winter Soldier. I thought you were, saw Dark World the other day. And you I was about it. to, and okay. we didn't get around. Don't, around. it's hot trash. Yeah, Is but it... I still want to watch it because it's got an affinity to it. Yeah. Yeah, for... <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason. Also, I mean, like, it's an MCU movie. And I mean, yeah, like, it's, well. it's still shot well, it's still acted well. I mean, like, I, I watched Iron Man 3... I, I still don't see. And I don't this, hate Iron Man three. This is actually the thing with like talking through the MCU movies is that I watched they, they, they actually <laughs> that's probably the bottom line. People say Dark uh, Thor the Dark World, and like it depends. Like Thor the Dark World, people epic. R- forget about Incredible Hulk because this is like one of the reasons I feel like it's because they recast they him. recast him to yeah. begin with yeah. yeah. He was one of the first movies that they made, and then... He was like a he, month after yeah, Iron Man 1. and you didn't hear about him for ages, and then he was just in Avengers, as yeah. a different character. As a different actor, a different yeah. actor yeah. yeah. And you were just like... They have, <laughs> they have referenced that movie, though, right? They have. That, um, that, the that Harlem movie incident. is canon. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Because that movie the is final canon. battle takes place in Harlem, and like... Um, uh, you've seen Civil War? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the general, uh, he's the secretary, Ross. The guy who comes like, here's the fucking book. He's the <laughs> guy from, Infin- uh, he's General Ross. From yeah, from, from the Incredible, Incredible Hulk. Hulk. So yeah. they, use the, they use the same actor. Yeah. Um, and it's the same character. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, like, when you, when you do actually go look through the history of all of the movies, like, mm. in the last decade, they're actually, because people always go like, oh, Marvel movies, they're always great. But there actually is a bit of hit and miss there. There yeah. are some of them that are like, whoa, come on, what were you doing? Yeah, like a lot of people are like, Martin, Marvel can never do wrong. Like they've never, I don't think they've ever made a bad movie, because there are some atrocious movies. Like, I always point to like Catwoman, Blade 3, <laughs> um, I'm not a fan of Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance. Mm. Um, there are some like real the, bad yeah, movies. Yeah, that Daredevil like, the movie. The old Supergirl movie, the X-Men Origins Wolverine, like 
those, those are bad movies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Marvel movies. Or X Men, X Men Apocalypse. Apocalypse Whoa, is a boring movie as opposed man. to a bad movie because like bad movies can be fun to watch. Yeah, but these are like it's just boring that movie. Oh, it sucks. Oh, that was so it sucks bad. so much. Yeah, because I really wanted that one to be good because last last stand was. Uh, Days of Future Not Past. Of Days, Days of Future Past. Yeah. Days of Future Past was really good. Really good. And this uh, one, I'm like terrified for Dark Phoenix because they couldn't even get a director. The producer became the director. Mm. And that's not a good sign. Mm. But Marvel's gonna reboot them. All new X Men. Um, what else was there? The. Um, yeah, but I was gonna I was gonna mention on Iron Man three. Yeah, I still don't know how I feel about that one. Yeah, I still can never because I remember watching it in the cinemas and Iron Man is probably my favorite Avenger. Mm-hmm. He's probably the one I like the most. I think I might be like starting to warm up to both Doctor Strange and Black Panther since seeing their oh, movies. I haven't seen Black Panther as well. Yeah, that, that one's a more of a part because yeah. it just came out. And yeah. Kind of busy. <laughs> yeah. It's rough. Yeah. Um, but those those two are starting to like, I'm starting to, I really like Black Panther's character. I like yeah what they've done with him of him trying to be a good king and just being a dude. Like, and he's I a dude. The Black Panther movies are going to take over the Captain America movies in terms of being political. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and, and I think that's a good, a good step, especially yeah. if they keep Ryan Coogler. Yeah, if, if they keep if they keep the directing and cast and everything, yeah. like even the producers around that, like yeah. all the pe- all the if bits, it's the same creative team, yeah, 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 then it's gonna be great. Um, but Iron Man's my favorite, and so when Iron Man three came out, I remember being super fucking pumped for the third one. Like, yeah. oh, this is gonna be awesome. And it's a mo- movie immediately after Avengers, so yeah, the year is different, but it's the next movie. It was good because. I mean, like it was carrying on from the story in Avengers, where yeah. he was, mm. like, which I like, yeah. like. Mm. But it was, yeah, like, the, the Mandarin reveal, I was like, what? And I don't know how yeah. I feel about it. That was it. really weird, because Mandarin was supposed to be, like, this huge character. In but he's, he is the... The main... He's Iron Man's... Uh, he's, yeah. He's, I wouldn't say Joker, but yeah, he's the... Uh, he's, yeah, he he's is. He's, like, one of his best known villains. Yeah. Yeah. He's the, he's the most... He's the most... Uh, how do I put this? But he he is the villain that gives Iron Man the most trouble. Yeah. He's the one that does the most damage. He's the one that like he's just across the board. He is. He's essentially Iron Man's Joker. Yeah. Because it's it's the opposite sort of thing of like Joker is like chaotic, evil, and crazy. Yeah. Whereas the Mandarin is more like he's philosophical and like yeah and like almost pathological and and surgical in the way he does things. And it was gonna be really cool. And then it wasn't. It was kind of. I, okay. mm. I don't mind that the that Ben Kingsley wasn't the Mandarin in that movie. Mm. Like I don't mind that twist at all. I enjoy that twist. Aldrich Killian being the Mandarin. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about that. Like, yeah, they should have just given him something else. But the th- but then the thing is, is they open it back up in other MCU movies. Yeah, it's not in the movies. It's the um, All Hail the King. It's a short where you see Trevor Slattery in jail, Ben Kingsley. And like ah, oh, and then like at the end of the, it's like, um, he wants his name back, and it just cuts because the Mandarin wants his name back because he stole it because he stole it from him to like, for marketing basically. Mm. Um, and isn't it like don't they have it played by Ben Kingsley as well? There was there's there's a there's a short where it's it's the Ben Kingsley character from yeah. Iron Man three is in jail, yeah, and then Ben Kingsley. Is also in that as well, but as the Mandarin, like no, as the proper Mandarin. No, you never actually see the Mandarin. Anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was trying to think the, about where I've seen that, but like they, they leave it open again, and it's like, yeah, what 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 are you doing? What leaving threads open? Why? Why? I, I think that that short is to correct what they did with Iron Man three. It's like, okay, you did not like the Mandarin. The Mandarin's still out there. The real Mandarin is still out there. They're never going to pick it up because they're never going to make an Iron Man solo movie again. And, uh, and for another he, 20 didn't years. Didn't Robbie D- Downey Jr. want... He never one? said, like, oh, yeah, I'll do Iron Man. He said, oh, I'm happy to do Iron Man 4, but, like, Marvel's not interested in it because they've told their story with Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man, except for in Avengers movies. Like, that's the narrative he plays. He plays a vital part of the Avengers. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, they've got to finish it up. I think, I think we might see it open up if they... If they like, and I don't see why not. I don't see why they the movies can't do what the comics do and just like start recasting people. 
putting people like different people in these same roles, different characters in these same roles. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, like why? Like, I, it still bugs me that we have only ever had Peter Parker as Spider Man. Yeah. In in cinema. Yeah. Where, where's my Miles Morales at, yo? You get an animated movie at the end of the year. Yeah. Which looks gorgeous. Like, yeah. Have you seen it? Like, yeah. yeah. But but still. Yeah. Again, yeah, not like Miles. I think they have, will do eventually. I hope so. Like, I am so excited for when they kill Peter because it seems like a lot of the um, a lot of the Mark's cinematic universe is based on the Ultimate Comics, and Ultimate Comics is where Peter dies, mm. like giving that character an end. And he's still in high school when that happens. Yeah, it's rough. The complete opposite of like like core universe. Mar- like Peter Parker's an adult. He became Iron Man for a little bit. Like he became. He got wealthy and could run around the world with a bunch of tech, mm. not just stuck in Brooklyn or Queens or whatever. Um, but the thing with the MCU is that they tend to mishmash as yeah, well. They, do, they, they, they take bits and pieces to try and make the coolest version of these yeah. superheroes possible because that's marketable. Yeah, like the Iron Spider suit that we saw for a flash in yeah. Homecoming. And now it's in Infinity War. Yeah, and, um, and that'll be that's gonna be cool to watch. Yeah. I love that. I've seen like so many little shorts because they're all over fucking Instagram. But <laughs> yeah. um, I like, like the one where it or something. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's funny because every time I log into the amalgam like Instagram, Instagram I like look at it because I get the notifications and I click the different notifications because yeah. you get the different ones. Yeah. But um, if I go into the amalgam one, it's like some story, Avengers ad. Some story, Avengers ad. <laughs> some story, <laughs> Avengers ad. And this keeps on going, and most of it's like Marvel, then Avengers ad, then Marvel, Avengers ad, NASA, Marvel, <laughs> Avengers ad. <laughs> <laughs> I can try to follow NASA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I follow NASA, but I didn't realize yeah. that. <laughs> There's um, so many times as well where I'll be like on the amalgam um, Instagram. Instagram and then just be like liking stuff and be like, yeah. oh, this is not my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, whoops. Um, and it's like, well, someone's got around just liking shit. <laughs> Who's this? Yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, I know it's like, it's weird when, like, Amalgam likes my pictures. I'm like, I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> it's, it's more than likely just me. Yeah. Just, that's the only other person with access oh, to it. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, do we have a favourite MCU movie? Uh, oh, mm. that's rough. It's hard because it's, I would say, as soon as I watch Ragnarok, it'll be Ragnarok. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I probably would have said Ragnarok up until I saw Black Panther. That's been my favourite so far. Yeah. Um, it's, it's Ragnarok's such, incredible, don't you Ragnarok's great. Like, for me, probably top six. Like, for me, probably that list is Captain America Winter Soldier at the top. Just because, yeah. like, that movie is really good on its own, and it's special to me because, like, it's about brothers basically and it was directed by brothers and at the time I was missing my brother because I just moved out of home mm. um so there's that mm. Civil War is the next one because it's Civil War it's really mm. good it's kind of like an, it is it's and a lot of people say it's not a Captain America movie like watching that very recently it still is a Captain America movie like that whole movie told through his perspective yes we get a couple of Tony scenes mm. but it yeah a little bit to like cutting towards the bad guy, which they do cut to, like Tony, is the antagonist of that movie. While mm. there is a villain, he is the antagonist of the movie. Mm. Um, yeah, I liked Civil War because they uh, they did a thing that I had always wanted Marvel to do, or at least the cinematic universe is like, give me a villain that's just a dude. Yeah, like give me a villain that's just a gu- like I don't want any superpowers anymore. Like yeah. let's see what it what what if a dude just tried to fuck these guys up? Yeah, and he did, and I was like. Oh, and that's he won. so good. He won. Yeah. Oh, he won. I love that. And, like, oh. that's the other thing. Like, Killmonger wins. Mm. He doesn't necessarily oh, win, yeah. but he wins. <clears throat> Kill- like, yeah, Killmonger for... He's yeah. the greatest villain. Like... Yeah, and I- I'm actually kind of sad that he dies. Like, I think I- we'll see him again. What's this? Black oh, Panther. Oh, I he haven't seen that. Ah. <laughs> he's, he's the, the villain. Guy. He's a villain of the movie. Yeah. Of course he's dead. <laughs> True. Um, but, um... He's a villain in an MCU movie. Yeah. <laughs> like... And it looks like... Like, spoilers, at some point, Thanos is going to cock it. Yeah. In Avengers 4. Uh, yeah, that's why they'd be calling it. That's why they haven't called it anything yet. Because, like, whatever the Avengers... Well, didn't we get that leak of, like, it's called the Infinity Gauntlet? It's called that the was Infinity Gauntlet. Rumor. And I don't think it's Gauntlet, because War is pretty much the Gauntlet storyline. And if there was Gauntlet, 
They would have said it's it because it's not a spoiler. It's probably whatever happened at the end of Infinity War, like naming it yeah. will spoil what happens in like yeah. it'd be called yeah, Death and Return of Iron Man or something. Like <laughs> no, they would never call a movie that. No, but like but that like, kind of thing. Yeah. It's just like oh fuck, Captain yeah. America's dead, isn't he? Like is something yeah. like that. I yeah. think I think they'll probably they, it will definitely be called Avengers something because this is more like a because uh, it's the Infinity War. Yeah, it's more like. But it is, it is Avengers Thanos. Infinity War. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh, it I is Avengers it was, Infinity, Infinity, War. Yeah. Infinity War. Yeah. But yeah, In- Infinity War is the subtitle, just like Age of Ultron. Yeah. Or yeah. Um. Wouldn't this be the Avengers only one... 4, though? No, it's 3. 3. Captain America Civil War. Oh, is yeah. Captain Are you forgetting movie? that Captain America Civil War was a Captain America movie, not yeah. the Avengers movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that one's a bit hard to pass sometimes, because you're like, wait, yeah. It's fucking Avengers movie. <laughs> yeah. that's, like, so, that's very comics. Like, comics will have all these other characters in it. Like, and but still still be about a one character. Yeah. Whereas, but it's so hard, because that is still an event movie. That's arguably more important than... Age of Ultron. Yeah. Like Age of Absolutely. Ult- Age yeah. of Ultron introduces a couple of characters and drops a city that causes the so- Sokovia Accords. Mm. The Civil War. That's it. You could, except for those introduction of a couple of characters and the the so- Sokovia Accords, the name, the movie can kind of be erased from. Yeah, but the the introduction of the... I think, I think um, Age of Ultron, for all its flaws, um, I think it did a really good job of showing something that I've never seen in a superhero movie before, apart from maybe maybe Batman, with mm. Iron Man, with, with Tony Stark being like, I'm trying to figure out how to stop us being superheroes. Yeah. Like, the old Ultron initiative being like, I'm trying to find the end goal here, yeah. guys. Like, we can't do this forever. Yeah. <clears throat> there isn't always going to be us. We yeah. need something yeah. to, to stop that. I'm like, oh, that's that's a thing I've never seen before. Yeah. It's a superhero going, huh, what happens if I do cark it? Yeah. I do like that aspect. There are beats of Age of Ultron I like. As a whole, I'm not a fan of that movie. Um, the... I, I like, I liked Ultron. I liked it as a villain. I I like his voice. Mm-hmm. I yeah. I've experienced other Ultrons where he's Hank Pym's creation, and I'm not too bothered about that. But he's has a, he has a daddy complexes. But it's like he's as just a bodyguard. He does his job, what he was meant to for a while. Whereas mm-hmm. in the movie. He immediately goes evil. Like, just well, looks at the world. It's fucked up. I kind of... Pro- but I get... But that's... Really, but that that's the progression really of every... Two and a half hours to make a movie. Yeah, that's yeah. the progression of every AI ever in cinema. Is like, if AI gets to look at the world, they're like, why would we want yeah. humans? Yeah. Like, look at you fuckers. You yeah. just fuck it up from dusk till dawn. Yeah. Like, that's, that's the whole... Like, AI in cinema has always done that. Yeah. Um... But, you know, I'm just trying to think. But, you know... So, did you... Yeah, you said yours would be Civil War, uh, Ragnarok, probably. Yeah, because I've seen cuts, Favorite. like, well, I've seen scenes from it, yeah. like... It's really funny. <laughs> probably <laughs> my only complaint with Ragnarok is that it's too fast. It Thor is. doesn't have time to process. Yeah. yeah. And, like, there's a couple of moments of him trying to process, but it's cut off with comedy, and it's just, like... Uh, yeah. It's just uh, that pace of the movie does not allow for... And like, that... That is what I'm worried about in, in Infinity War. I, is I'm worried about the pacing. I'm worried that it's just going to be like... Like a slow, like, five minute, ten minute, and then it's just going to be like... Bam, 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 They're probably just going to, like, tell stories as they come, like, in parts, and then it'll get to a point where it's like, oh, it all led them to be here in the same place, and these people died. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it, it feels like there's a lot happening. Because, like, there's, there's the shot... There's, there's so much happening in that movie. In, in the trailer, just alone, there's the shot of, of like, Captain America and Black Widow and Black Panther in Wakanda. Yeah. But then there's the shot of Iron Man and... Star-Lord and Peter. Star- and... Yeah, and then, yeah, Doctor Strange and all that. And they're in New York. Yeah. And, and that's then where they're, they're, and they're also on a red planet somewhere. Yeah. Like... Yeah, that's... and then he... Uh, and then at some point, Thanos is gonna have to end up in Wakanda. Yeah. No, I... I I could and probably... also, we're gonna have to get a Thanos flashback because that mm-hmm. was in the trailer. Like, yeah, there's a lot of the movie, lot... and that's why it's the longest movie today, the MCU movie today. Yeah. Like, it is over two and a half hours long, like officially. I just don't, I don't, I don't personally get the thing of people being like, oh, a long movie. Like, if it's a long movie, good. It means there's shit to do. As long as it's paced well, because like you can have a long movie and it not be paced well, and it mm-hmm. kind of ruins the movie. 
um, Batman v Superman is my example. Like, I like that movie. It has a bunch of issues. But if it was paced better, I feel I could watch that movie Mm. a few more times. Because I wanted to see that movie a million times. And cinemas only saw it twice, but I didn't like the pacing. Yeah. Infinity War, I want to see that movie a bunch of times. But if it's not paced well, we can, like... Even if it's, like, the difference between, like, fucking full speed ahead and, like, moments of, like, just stuff that's not important. Mm. And that what this movie could be. But... I have trust in the Russo brothers. Like, yeah. they're probably the first directors in the MCU that haven't fucked up a sequel. Yeah. Because, like, John Favreau, but I mean, too. I mean, too is not generally liked, but also no. hype went into that one. Um, I always forget about what I mean, too is about. It's not really about anything. It's it, it's it's just a sequel. Like, it, on a, like it feels what? like them going, all right, we've got Who's an the I- main bad guy in there? Whiplash. Oh, that's right. Yep. Whiplash and. And he's like, he's like, and, and ah, Hammond, my Hammond. heart yeah, thing is real bad. No, Richard, John, <laughs> Richard Hammond, Richard Hammond's a guy. Richard Hammond. Um, um, Sam Rockwell, <laughs> like, yeah, Richard Rockwell, Hammond. Sam Rockwell, Sam Rockwell. Did I say Richard Hammond? <laughs> I fuck. Whatever. What his name f- is his name is Hammond. Like his yeah. his his weapons. Yeah. Company Hammer. is named Hammond. Hammer. 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 Justin Hammer. Justin, Justin Hammer. Hammer. There it we is. We got it. Yeah. We got there. We got there eventually. It was a long walk. Um. um yeah, I meant it's about nothing. I remember. No, it's it's about um Same his movie. heart boy, and then they were like, "Oh, Captain America Shield," and Iron Man's like, "I'm gonna piss all over this." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was literally that that movie felt like them going like, "We've got an idea of what we want to do with all this shit, but we don't know if people are gonna react well to this idea of building a movie over ten yeah. years." So they're like, "So hey, there's this shield." Yeah, like yeah. they put in the shield to see how people will react to yeah. that. They 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 just made the sequel to see like, will people actually even go see it? Turns out people saw it. People didn't like it that much. Yeah. But people saw it. Yeah. Um, and because it wasn't, it was after Iron Man 2, then they did Thor. Thor and then, then Captain America. Captain America. Because mm-hmm. Thor was the one where I was like, you guys, you guys got a rough, because I don't give a shit about Thor no either way. Yeah. But they made a movie that I gave a crap about. Yeah. Like, I enjoyed that movie. I thought yeah. it was fun. Throwing back, it's a little bit rough because with so many leagues ahead because they have a better budget. Yeah. The main thing I didn't like about the original Thor movie is that they had two sets. Yeah. That's it. It was. Asgard, <laughs> yeah, and then, and then that, that, that one town, that desert, yeah. Yeah. and it was literally like the one street in the one town that yeah. they were yeah. ever in because they built that town. Yeah, that's why that town seems incredibly small because they spent like hundred bucks to build it. Yeah, like, <laughs> again, like it was budgets and them trying to figure out like, okay, does anyone give a shit about Thor? Turns out everyone gives a shit about Thor. But um, enough people did, and then like, yeah, I mean, because you can tell, movie. yeah, <laughs> the, you can tell the budget on Dark World was way bigger because that yeah. thing's effects are pretty crazy. Yeah, now that movie looks good, but it's but a, then it, oh man, and Chris not, Eccleston deserves better. He deserves better. The director, like the director, had to do a clean up job because Patty Jenkins, director of Wonder Woman, was on the project, and she had like because the first movie is very much a Hamlet storyline. Mm-hmm. Um, she wanted to do a kind of Romeo and Juliet story for the second one, keeping with the Shakespearean themes. And then Marvel was like, no, that doesn't sound good. And they fired her. And then Alan Taylor, you know, a good Game of Thrones director, he's directed a bunch of really good episodes. He came in and had to like, try and piece it together. And then, like, not quite as bad as what happened with Edgar Wright and Ant-Man, but um, it's a little bit better than that. But, yeah, he still had to, like, come in and... Yeah, by all accounts, that's the, the reason that um, Natalie Portman is not back in the... Yeah, because of what happened to Patty Because, yeah, that she was like, I don't like the fact that you just fired, like, straight up fired that director, so yeah. fuck you guys, and that's oh, why she hasn't been She back did that yet. movie, fulfilled her contract, and, like, hasn't yeah, come and then back. So she wasn't back. in Ragnarok. She's right? not in Ragnarok. Nope. They, they mentioned they her. They mentioned her, yeah. I'm pretty sure, because they mentioned her in... So she she wasn't in Avengers either. They were just like, oh yeah, she's good. Yeah, and even in yeah. Ultron, they just mention her. Yeah. yeah, I think they mention her in Ragnarok, but yeah, they say in a, it's something something happens. It's about the dumping. It's about the, when those kids come up and just like, oh, I said that Jane jumped, a uh, Jane dumped you, and he's like, oh, well, I dumped her. Like, it was like oh, okay, that, yeah, that's it. That's pretty but much yes, it. that's right. Because yeah. like, I was trying to figure out because I I felt like in Ragnarok they finally figured out a way to just write her out. Yeah. Just be like, she's never going to come back. Just yeah. Bleh, 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 yeah. Bleh. Uh, yeah. And yeah, that's what they did. Um, and the movie's all the better for it. I'm sorry to say, Matt, Natalie Portman, you're a good actress, but. She is. She's incredible. But yeah. yeah, like that story does not need her. Thor. And, like, Thor the best... I mean, like, Iron Man barely needs Pepper Potts. She's just sort of there for, like, oh, this happened. Yeah, I think, like, Pepper Potts is an interesting character because now, like, after Iron Man 2, she runs his company. Yeah. Mm. She kind of completed her arc. Yeah. So it's hard for her to do anything that's, else. Yeah, but the thing that, that Pepper Potts does that 
that Jane Foster can't do is that Pepper gives Tony a reason to live. Mm. Like, the, only, mm. the the reason Tony does everything that he does and still works yeah, with Iron true. Man is because he loves Pepper and wants to keep her safe. He's the only, She's the only thing in his life that he gives two fucks about. Everything else he could care less. Thor doesn't necessarily have that kind of connection with yeah, Jane. He he does what he does because, because he's, he's Thor. Yeah, yeah. Because he's he is expected to do that. Because he's living up to his father. Because he's got a brother who's a shit and needs to stop. Because there are much bigger stakes than just his girlfriend. Yeah. There is an entire universe at stake. And that's why he does what he does. That's like, his motivation after Infinity, uh, Age of Ultron is to go find the Infinity Stones. Like, he decides yeah. to do that. Like, that's a task. And you find out in Ragnarok, doesn't do a good job of it. Like, you know, for a couple of them after, like, the Tesseract, like, the Tesseract is on Asgard. He vision, like, he's not where a couple of them are, but he just sends, spends, goes around the universe. Where's the Ether them. again? Um, it's with the Collector. At the end of Thor the Dark World. That's right. There, the Asgardians See, give it to that's him. the problem with Dark World, too, is that there's stuff that happens in that that's really important that I don't remember <laughs> because yeah. I just couldn't give a shit about that movie. Yeah. It's so fucking bad. Yeah, it, Ugh. yeah, not the greatest. I'm not a fan of Guardians of the Galaxy 2 either. Wait, I, I'm, I, think, I think I might be wrong here, but is Thor the Dark World and Ragnarok, do they have the same pro, um, antagonists? No, no, they're two different ones. They, okay. yeah. Thor the Dark World has Christopher Eccleston as a dark, elf, yeah, a dark elf, which is a dark elf. Um, Ragnarok has Hela, who is Kate Blanchett. And just a fucking Kate Blanchett. Hells yeah. Going through fucking Asgard. She's mm-hmm. really cool. shit. She's really cool. <laughs> they, they give her a super cool character and she nails it. Yeah. She just chews the scenery. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, she's really good. Um, oh, yeah. God, that movie. But yeah, um, I'm not a fan of Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah. I think it was fine. It was a good spectacle movie. It's a I, good sequel. Like, it just does it again. I like, liked it. The only thing I didn't like about it was the fact that it was not Guardians of the Galaxy. It was Chris Pat- Pratt has daddy issues. <laughs> Which I don't know. Like, that made the... Vi- like, it fixed the villain issue. Like, Ego is not a bad villain. Like, yeah. as opposed to all the other villains. Like, 2017 was a good year for Marvel villains. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. they kind of fixed it. Like, because yeah. um, then uh, that... in middle of the year with Spider-Man Vulture's a great villain yeah and then Hela is a good like you want to see that character as opposed to Malekith as opposed to see I think the the, the idea of Malekith is a really interesting idea I wanted to see elves I, I wanted to see their mm. version of the Dark Elves yeah and it was fine but the writing and the story around it was just he... gross I didn't even know his motivation until the last time I watched it which was very recent and it's just Make the world into like negative energy, into yeah. dark energy, like yeah, so that they that can is exist. The weakest motivation yeah. ever, like oh, it's a big <coughs> Odin fuck him over. I'm like I get that everyone wants to fuck over Odin back, yeah. but like, uh, like it's so bad. Yeah. Like, uh, anyway, yeah. um, Guardians Two was it was fine. It was a big spectacle, but like you, like I, I didn't like the fact that it's it seemed to focus solely on Star-Lord again. Yeah. Well, that yeah. was the point of the first movie. Like, we figured out who Star-Lord... Like, we didn't figure it out, but, like, yeah. we got Star-Lord's story, we know his character. Yeah. Like, let's focus on these other guys. Like, what is Groot? Can we... Can we... Right? Like, like yeah. That would have been fun. I still did appreciate a lot of the story, though. Like, the... <laughs> he, like, how they explained what happened to him with the bandits and the, the fact that he wasn't, um kidnapped he was saved and all that yeah that yeah. was really yeah. sweet it's another good Star Wars movie but like I think <laughs> it's another good Star Wars movie yeah it's a great Star Wars movie I said Star Lord so oh yeah, I yeah. thought you said Star Wars yeah. I'm like yeah. <laughs> wait a second <laughs> uh, but you know it is kind of Star Wars and so there's like daddy issues but um there's uh what's the other part the I mean it does th- that that story also does include Rocket yeah, like, Rocket, he, that's he the gets, character I was he, yeah he gets a good character arc in that but the others I mean, more has an arc with her sister and his sister's a little bit better by the end, Nebula, mm. but... Again, it feels like all the work they did in that movie could have been done in, like, a half-hour scene in a different movie. That's the thing, like, that movie is a short amount of time, mm. but it's not... It doesn't take days, it's, like, two days at most. Yeah. Like, from the start to the end, because they... On the ego's fine, it's, like, and a it was, day. It was always gonna be the problem for that sequel, though, was that you would have to... Because the thing with the first Guardians of the Galaxy was it was the aesthetic and the mood and everything they did around that. And the music and the way it was shot and the the colours and all that kind of stuff. That's what made that thing so spectacular. It was like, holy shit, you've never seen anything like this before out of a superhero movie. Yeah. 
now you've got to do it again and people have got to like it again. And it's like, that's always going to have diminishing returns because yeah. it's like, no matter what they do, someone's going to say, well, it's just like Guardians 1. Like, no shit, dude. Like, that's <laughs> what the you point. Like, yeah, like, we did it again and you guys were like, it's the same. But I still don't think they did enough justice story-wise yeah. to, to allow them to do it again. They're going to have to do something special in 3 to allow them to do the aesthetic again because that's, that's the key for that series is that the story has to be good because if the story isn't good, then people are just going to shit on the aesthetic for copying the first film. Yeah. That was a long walk. <laughs> well, it's, it's not wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any other favourite movies? Just in general? I like Homecoming. I like Homecoming. I but it's just, an, it's literally just another Spider-Man. Yeah, I think it's I better than Chicken it's, um, Well, Spider-Man. yeah. But if you look at the story, it's very... I mean, well, like, they do change all up. all of Spider-Man they, stories, yeah. though. So. <laughs> they change I... up a lot of stuff, which I did like. Yeah. I um, literally forgot that movie happened until you mentioned it. But... It, it's good. I really enjoyed watching it, but I just... It doesn't... Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was fantastic that they didn't have to go through the whole, oh, this is... This is Peter Parker. He got bitten yeah, by we didn't a spider. Have, yeah, we didn't because have to... we've done that like 500 times yeah. now. We, we Everybody have... knows. Yeah, we didn't have to kill another Uncle Ben. Like, we then, didn't have to roll out another Uncle Ben. Uncle and ben like, shoot like, him in the head. That's another thing I liked about, like, say, Guardians 2. They yeah. didn't have to reintroduce the characters like they did for some, like, like, I don't know, Iron Man 2. They, like, reintroduce characters again. Yeah. You don't have to do that every time you make a sequel. And, like, they didn't do that for Guardians 2. And they didn't do that for Homecoming because they knew that we knew who Peter Parker was. Yeah. yeah. They um, spent time introducing other characters, like yeah. Ned, like Vulture. Yeah. Like, yeah, I do think Vulture, like, Vulture is, like, one, so much better than his comic book counterpart. He's just like, mm. oh, I fucking hate Norman Osborn, and that's it. <laughs> he's like, that's all he does. Ah. Like the Vulture. He's a vulture. He goes and he scavenges. Yeah, yeah scavenges from like all of the pieces. Avengers fuck ups. Yeah. Like that's really smart. Yeah, it's like, really cool. He does what he says on the box. Like he, yeah, like <laughs> I never did that in the comics or in any other interpretation, to my knowledge. Yeah. Um, every time I saw the, it was a really cool like spin on the way he looked as well. Because every time I think of the vulture, all I can think of is this web of shadows vulture, where he's like bald and looks like real gangly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a traditional depiction as well. Yeah, but no, they did really well with the whole the whole thing. Like I, again, I really enjoyed that movie, but the it, twist as well was really cool because the, it was, twist. the twist was that. The vulture was actually the girl that he was into his dad. Oh yeah, and that, when that happened, yeah, and oh, no yeah. one expected it because yeah. um, she was black. But then it was just like, oh well, I'm not gonna say. No, anything. it wasn't. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. It was for me. I was actually. I remember telling someone like, "There's a twist in that movie that I didn't see coming," because I was so focused on the rest of the film. Yeah, like yeah. it was actually building a really good story, and I was focusing on that. And I was like, "Oh man, this is a really good story." And then he opens the door, and he's there, and I'm like. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait a second. Because like, the way he's like, oh, he's just going to pick up the girl and he's like, her mum will open up the door. Because we've seen her mum. She's a great yeah. after the um, Washington Monument sequence. Yeah. And like, oh, we're just going to see her. And then it's Michael Keaton. We're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. was like... This, <laughs> that was a really funny scene too because yeah. he, they both knew who each other were yeah. after I, a little... Yeah, like, like it took Vulture a, a little bit longer. Because but... like he's piecing it all together in that car ride, which yeah. is the most intense car ride yeah. I've ever seen in my in, life. In a movie, like, yeah. And it was so actually really cool. nice because the Vulture was like, yeah, okay, I know who you are. I'm going to give you a chance. Because, yeah, cause because you saved like, my daughter. Yeah. To leave her like, alone. it's not like they had any hard feelings against each yeah. other, but Peter's like, well, it you're a, a bad guy. <laughs> it was a really interesting dynamic for yeah. a villain and a hero to go through, and he was, was that sitting in the car ride and kind of being yeah. like, we don't actually hate each other. Yeah. We just don't want us to do the other thing. Yeah. But and it was really cool because Peter didn't want to stop Vulture because he was doing bad stuff. He wanted to stop Vulture because he cared about that girl. Yeah. And he didn't want her dad to end up in yeah. jail or dead. Yeah. yeah. And that's so what ultimately, like, he saves, he saves Peter. He, uh, Peter saves Vulture. And yeah. at the end, like, people in jail, yeah. people don't, people come up to him and it's just like, oh, so, you know, Spider-Man's real identity. Like, nope. Yeah. I don't know that. Because he, yeah. One, he him. wants to protect Peter because he's saved getting two swords and two he wants to get him himself yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and he gets out of jail and yeah so yeah, but that was the thing about that movie is that I think there's there's been so much focus over my like last couple of years of watching Marvel movies of like Infinity War Avengers like yeah. that's where we're all the leading. main story yeah, yeah we're all leading there we're all leading there and Spider-Man Homecoming feels like a side story a really good side story it's yeah. a good 
Yeah, but was, because of that, because, most of the details got shoved to the back yeah, of my head. It was like, because oh, they had to like introduce him as one of the OGs after all of the OGs have already gone through and done their stuff. Yeah, so like they he's had the, to push him in late. But... He's in the new class of like yeah. Doctor Strange. Um, yeah. Like rewatching that recently, like before, like I didn't. I'm not a fan of the Doctor Strange movie. I really like that movie. I, I like the way they did it. I think it's um, really the storyline was like the end story was a bit dull for me, but at the same time, really. Cool. I see. Oh, I, no, I liked it. and I hated it. I love it. I love the fact because I knew nothing about Doctor Strange going into it. Neither I did liked. I really. hmm? Neither did I really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I really like it when something different occurs and i like the fact that you can't kill dormammu yeah so you have to outsmart that, him yes yeah, that was my i do always like that yeah but, i um, love and that scene the way it's shot the way it's done you just watch him get fucking owned <laughs> over and over and over again and i'm like this is great and i yeah. like and it was after like three of them i was like i know exactly what he's doing and this is amazing and he's he's nailed it and I was like, like that's so cool and like that's probably one of the first movies, probably since like probably like Phase Three. Their third acts are good. Before that, like Age of Ultron, Dark World, they've all got pretty bad third acts. Just like oh, I guess we're just punching each other and it's just blah, just mess of CG. Whereas like Doctor Strange, it's a mess of CG, but it's a smart mess. Of yeah, CG. yeah, and like. Yeah, I, I like the way that movie looks. Like, it's mm. psychedelic, like, the way it all yeah. flows together. Like, this thing I think looks the nuts. magic looks good, like, when he's in there. But when it's, like, when he's just doing his thing as the, as the dude, it to me, it looks bland. Like, it just, this is a cookie kind of movie. Mm, but I, then, yeah. like, the other visuals make it look awesome. Yeah, I, just I didn't know I just anything didn't about him when I was going into Neither did I. I thought yeah. that was really cool. Like, the Lamborghini crash. Yeah. I was like, oh. whoa, he was, like, real up there, and then he was real down there, and he went insane for a bit. <laughs> maybe <laughs> they, they Doctor even... Strange, maybe none of this actually exists, and Doctor <laughs> Strange is just fucked up. Yeah, and they... he's like, Iron Man? <laughs> <laughs> they even put an, an Iron Man 2 Easter egg in that Lamborghini crash. Oh, really? Yeah, so if you... When he's, um... <clears throat> In Iron Man 2, the villain, Hammer, yeah. Austin Hammer, he's, like, going to the, the like, US Council and he's got, like, oh, we're, we're developing Iron Man suits. And there's yeah. that little thing where Tony Stark, like, pulls up all the rest of the videos and you see, like, an Iron Man suit, like, s like with a dude in it spin around and then snap and, like, the dude's spine gets fucked up. And in the Lamborghini ride... Mm -hmm. On the way to his party or whatever, Doctor Strange is looking through possible cases, and one of them is, like, massive spinal damage from a test of a, like, military-grade mm -hmm. weapon suit. And he's like, nah, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's a really cool, like, no one's referenced Iron Man 2 since Iron Man 2. Yeah. yeah. So they, like, threw that in there as a little bit. What what scene in particular are they referencing? Because I don't remember anyone being in any suits. So, oh, oh, yes, yeah. I remember at the hearing. Yeah. At the hearing, he shows a video of someone in a suit, and they, like, show, like, the beginning of the test. That... And then Tony shows the rest of the video yeah. where the test goes wrong. Because... And it, like, snaps his spine. Because like, that was the fuck. movie after Civil War. A lot of people thought that was Rhodey. It was like military man in an mm -mm. experimental suit, no. and like the director came out and said, "It's not." That's all he said. But yeah. I think it's not Rhodey. Like, if it's, it's not Rhodey, then who is it? It's that guy. Yeah, yeah, it's the guy because that movie does take place around Iron Man. Yeah. Like, yeah, and then he spends forever at the training, and then and I love he... the little, I love the little little touches in that movie. Like, is this my mantra? No, it's the Wi-Fi password. You fucked yeah. hard. <laughs> like just these little bits. Yeah, where, yeah, yeah. Good. like really good moments. And I think, I think, um, I don't like Benedict Cumberbatch. I, I, don't I like, like him, him as Sherlock. There's been he's been in a couple of other movies that I'm just like, you. I learned was... recently that he was um, rivaling David Tennant to be the tenth Doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they were they were one of the two um, oh. when they were like getting down to their casting. But like, I, probably I don't... how he got the Sherlock role. Was yeah, because like, yeah. he met with um, Mark. And I don't. Yeah, I, I don't like him generally. But there's something about his characterization for mm. Doctor Strange that I might actually. I like this. I could see his quips and his ways of speaking. Yeah. See, I kind of see him as the replacement for Iron Man. Of like, once Tony Stark's done, or yeah. once they finally get that character gone, Doctor Strange is the one who's going to be like quipping and yeah, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. Which I think, I'm up for. I think they kind of they're splitting that with Doctor Strange and Spider Man. Because like, mm. like Spider Man is the name. Like he's like 
one of the biggest yeah. superheroes ever. Plus, like, it, he's kind of techy in this universe because of Iron Man. Yeah, where, but I think because of the, the like, um, the leadership quality that Doctor yeah. Strange has, that that's going to be what he's taking. Like, he's Iron Man and Doctor Strange had a lot of... Um, they team up a lot. Yeah. They live in New York. Mm. Yeah. Like, they, yeah, they, they teamed up a lot, and there was a lot of... Uh, Parts in there where Spider Man would always go to his, to Doctor Strange for help because he had to fight this guy that was just ridiculous. <laughs> and yeah. he's like, in Well, one I more need day uh, this spell. Got, I think you've got one more day. Yeah. Um, that's the one where, like, um, he has to, like, trying to, like, Armay's dying. He's trying to, um, like, he make a deal with the devil. Yeah. And he goes to Doctor Strange, like, Hey, how do I meet, meet Mephisto? Yeah. And he's like, You don't want to do that. He's like, Yeah, I do. And then, yeah. And they, yeah. I like that they because they like four blocks away. Yeah, that was a really sad. That was mm. a really sad story. Yeah, and when, then it all gets rebooted pretty much. Yeah, so. he yeah. never was married to Mary Jane, yeah. and their child will never exist. So I think we've hit all the movies except Ant Man. Ant Man was good, but also not good. Yeah, I think that's everyone's sort of general consensus Ant- on it. No, for me, Ant Man was fine. Yeah, yeah. It's, it did its job for me because I love the director they had, Edgar Wright. He's my favourite director. He did your favourite movie, Scott Pilgrim vs. Yeah. the World. Like, that movie should have been brilliant, but yeah. because he left at the final second, because of creative issues, a lot of people think that's the Falcon scene, mainly, because he wanted to make his own self-contained movie, whereas they uh. wanted to insert, hey, it's a Marvel movie! Like, mm. um, and there's a couple of other, like, bits, and, yeah, the stuff like that. So, like, for yeah. me, the movie should have been so smart, as opposed to... Like, there's still Edgar Wright-isms in that. Like, yeah. the, the city blowing up, but it's only the miniature city. Yeah. And, like, Thomas the Train... Like, the, that whole train sequence is a total rip on every train sequence in superhero movies, like Spider-Man 2. Mm-hmm. Like, the uh, the Wolverine. Yeah. Like, there's so many train sequences that I can't think of, too. But, I love that yeah. scene. Yeah, it, but in the, it rips on that. Like, this... Yeah. It, I do like the, the fight scenes, but other than that... Yeah, I mean, it's done really well. It's it's fine the thing that that the movie like after that movie was done and then like civil war came after that right uh, yes yeah like the, the inter- like yeah so it, when when civil war happened and i saw ant-man in that i was like they should have just put ant-man in civil war yeah and then done his movie later yeah because that was that would have been a really cool introduction to him rather than the rest of it i get why they did that though because he lets him have his own movie and he's like, okay, cool. Then he becomes Giant Man, which is him and Peter, like kind of the best parts of that movie. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you, you still could, he could have gone Giant Man because the whole point of Ant-Man was that he can't go too small. Yeah. It was never that he could go too big or couldn't go big. Yeah. It was that like, oh, you can't go too small. Like that was the whole point. So yeah. like they could, they could have totally been, he could have just said like, I've got a trick. I've never, I haven't tested it outside of the lab before. I might rip in two or whatever his yeah. line is yeah. and done that it would have been like oh shit he can grow yeah. and then the, the movie would have been focused on him getting smaller than what he was like it, it, they could have done it but I just felt like <clears throat> after seeing his movie that Ant-Man is a character that doesn't have like a whole long cinematic lifespan yeah well, but Ant-Man and the Wasp yeah. maybe you know that's why I think that's why they've set it up like he's got a history like he's the second Ant-Man She's going to be the second Wasp. Like, mm. there's a history there. And I like when the Marvel movie gives us history. Because outside of Captain America and, like, the first Ant-Man, they give yeah. us, like, um, Hank Pym quitting S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff like that. Mm. Um, yeah. They, we, we really talked about all the movies. I think so. We hit the Iron Man trilogy, kind of. Like, yeah, yeah, we yeah. talked about yeah. that. Hulk? We hit... Yeah, we talked about we Hulk. Hulk. We talked about as much as Hulk deserves. Um, Thor's. We hit the, the Thor's. Thor's. We hit the Captain America's. All the Avengers movies. I think Cap probably the one we talked about at least besides saying it. Well, we didn't really talk we about did, we didn't really talk about the first Captain America, and movie. we didn't really talk about the first Avengers movie. Oh yeah, we, yeah, not the first Avengers. Oh yeah. Well, okay, the first Avengers movie. When you saw that, what did you think? It was the best movie of all time when I first saw it. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> it was. Was it not like what? I, and then I go back and see it now. I'm like, oh yeah, this yeah, is pretty good. good. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> good. But, but it was it was still like uh, even now, like you look back and the way the way they tie it all in, the way it all works, it's fucking incredible phase one to me is the most it's the best interconnected universe mm. to then pass that it's just like oh yes we can just do whatever the fuck you want well, you've already seen Avengers you already made us half a million and a half billion dollars like you're gonna watch 
everything. Like, well, phase not, phase two feels like a way more long tail. Like phase one is very much like we're going to get these guys together yeah. and we're going to do a thing. Phase two feels like they were making a whole See, bunch of small steps yeah. to get to the big one, which is what we're in now. Phase yeah. three, like that's yeah. that's what they were like. Phase two was a bunch of like dropping a bunch of hints. Here's a couple infinity stones. You don't really know about it, but you kind of do. Yeah, yeah. I never explained it, and then yeah. everyone's like. Guardians. Well, well, someone was like someone who read comic books would have been like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what that's what everyone oh was doing. God. And then the collector in Guardians is just like these are Infinity Stones, they're pretty powerful. Yeah. And then Star Wars like, haha, bitch, and then kills Ronan. We're the Guardians of the Galaxy, bitch. Yeah. But the first, um, <laughs> the first Avengers is incredible. Like just yeah. what they do with that movie, the introduction of Thor into it. Yeah. Is just like when he just comes straight down out of a lightning bolt yeah. and Cap and is it Cap? Afraid, no, of, afraid of a little thunder. I'm not awfully fond of what follows. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. That's a great line. And doth doth mother know you weareth her drapes? Which is, is weird because I like that line, but he doesn't speak doc well. Like he just speaks eloquent English, like modern English. No, but it's the it's the. It's the way he looks. Like, yeah, I mean, speaking yeah. on the way he looks. Yeah. He looks like something from, like, a Shakespearean. Yeah. And also, he has that sort of slight accent. Yeah. Um, and I think at this point, they know about Asgardians. They would know about Thor, because, like, they yeah. said, Thor is part of um, mythology. Like, yeah. Like, there's a mythology that Earth subscribed to. Yeah. But and he even real. says, like, um, Iron Man says, like, the line before that is, I didn't know I was, do like, I didn't know I was watching an amateur version of Shakespeare in the Park. Yeah, is basically what he says before he does the thing. And I think it, oh, it's great. It's yeah. great. They introduce all the characters perfectly in that movie. They tie them up well. Um, Nick Fury is great in that movie. Yeah, we didn't talk much about Nick Fury. Has he, has he been in? Boot. The last movie he was in was Age of Ultron. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then that's it. And but now he's coming back from Captain Marvel. Captain oh, Marvel. is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is it because that movie's a nineties movie. Um, they like will have. Fury with two eyes. We'll have Coulson alive. Ooh. Um, Wait, Coulson is alive. He is alive, but they don't talk about that. Why? Why don't they? What's I the think deal? because like I think it's because Kevin Feige has a vision of like these are the movies I want to do. This is my ten year plan. Now I have another twenty two movies after this that I have planned. And and because Disney like fuck this makes money. Let's make a TV show. He's like oh, I didn't plan for that. And so the TV shows work from that. And now the TV show is like there's like a pseudo like. It's its own, not canon, it's like, its own universe in which things happen, but they still are, like, everything just runs parallel, and there's not much, as much linking anymore, because Agents they of Shield Season 1... They should is, definitely do that. Yeah, and it's like... They should link it up. Because I think it has been mentioned that, like, he's alive. Not in the movie. It's never been mentioned in the movie. Coulson has never been brought up again after Avengers 1. And I think that's because... I'm pretty sure... No. No, I'm sure it is brought up. Coulson's never been brought up again because of the TV show. No, because I isn't isn't there a isn't there a scene or am I imagining something? Isn't there a scene where someone says something about like they needed something to fight for? That was in the first movie. That's in the first movie. Yeah, yeah. But isn't that doesn't that happen again? No. Oh. They needed he... something to fight for again, so he brought Coulson back, <laughs> yeah. shot him. him. <laughs> I, I swear to God, there was there was a mention of somewhere. Maybe Nick Fury mentions it. I can't remember, but I swear I've, I I remember hearing a, a, a line, a throwaway line that made me go, "Oh." I don't think so. I'm gonna have to rewatch these all. I'm it is. Have to rewatch these all. It is super weird because there's um, so many throwaway lines. Yeah, yeah, there are. Well, we yeah, it, it's, it's super weird that they got that attached to Agent Coulson because, like, I mean, like, we got attached to him because we knew who he was. But then there was, like, Cap there was, like, yeah. Iron Man is, like, he saw him, that movie, at the start of that movie, he's, like, fuck off, out of my house, I don't <laughs> yeah, want yeah. him here. <laughs> yeah. And then it's, like, he's dead? <laughs> and, like, he's always been a Bosman in life. Like, he yeah. was in the first Iron Man movie, he's in the second Iron Man movie, he's in Thor, which Iron Man doesn't seem there, but... And then he's in Avengers. That's it. Like, yeah. and he, he was just, just in some movies, and yeah. like he was, he was good. Like, he was, he, he, he did some comic relief. Yeah, um, he connected people together, so everyone was like, "Ah, oh, he's in this movie and this movie." Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like, like he had a very easy face to remember, so everyone sort of just knew who he was. Yeah, and he was yeah. like the staple for Shield at the yeah. time before Nick Fury. Because was they didn't want to pay Nick uh, Samuel, Samuel Jackson. Jackson for every single movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he was he was a 
I mean, they they mention like, I think it's in between a couple of Iron Man movies or like during an Iron Man movie, they mention that he's been in contact with them constantly. Yeah, it's like, in the second one. They they yeah. do constantly liaison and stuff. Like, yeah, because yeah, yeah, reasons. But yeah, no, they would. It, it just seemed weird to me because they were all just like. Fuck you, dude. Yeah. And, like, even Captain America's like, I don't like the fact that I'm in the future. Stop trying to pressure me into shit. You, know, <laughs> a re- you designed a really bad costume for me. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, oh, yeah, that's right, because Agent Coulson's like, oh, I had some, I had some help yeah. design the costume. And then Captain America's like, eh. <laughs> I was going to say that about Captain America, like, the first Avenger, the, the first movie. Yeah. Is that I think they did a really, really, really good job of bringing Captain America into the 21st century. I think that was a good yeah. thing to do. Mm. Of like, okay, let's tell the story in World War Two yeah. at the time it was made, like the comics are set, so we can figure this and out. And that is so integral to his story. Like, yes, yeah. he needs to be there. He can't yeah. just be Captain America in the 21st century, because what, what are you going to put him through? Iraq? Uh, yeah, no Captain America They try that with the Ultimates, and it just doesn't work. Like, yeah. he just, oh, he swears, and he's a military man. Like that, that's, no, he needs, no one cares about that Captain yeah, America. Yeah, he, needs, he needed the war where there's an actual evil to yeah. face. And so... And that's why the next two movies are so great, because he's dealing with so many shades of grey. Yes, and he can't. And... He, but he does, though. He like, does, he, but he, he doesn't know how. He's, yeah. he's, he's stumbling his way through shades of grey. Yeah. and But he does come down on decisions. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, Hydra has infected all of S.H.I.E.L.D.? We'll kill S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes. We'll cut it off. You know, the head, but that didn't really work for Hydra, but we'll just cut it off. Yeah. To just completely eradicate the virus. In Civil War, he's like, I just don't believe that the government, people with agendas, because he's been fucked up by S.H.I.E.L.D. and yeah. Hydra, yeah. people, they're going to have their own agendas. Like, I, yeah. Yeah. He has these clear things, just like, oh no. And like, yeah, he's, but he's dealing with a world that's all shades of grey. Yeah. Like, and he's trying to figure his way out, and I I love that last little sequence in, in the first Avengers movie, where, like, the way it's shot, too, like, I feel like they changed the film grain or something. <laughs> Like, something changes in the way it's shooting, because when he wakes up, it feels like the same movie, but when he runs out into, like, the middle of Times yeah. Square, it's like, oh, this is... It feels different. Like, the, yeah. sh- the, the shot, the way it's composed, yeah. feels different, and suddenly feels like you're in a modern movie. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, shit, and he's just freaking out, and there's yeah. all this stuff around him. I'm like, that's a really good way to end that. Yeah. <laughs> of just, like, dude does no idea where he is. It's great. Yeah. Captain America, my favorite hero in the MCU. Really? Yeah, because I really like um, Civil. Uh, no, Civil War and Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier made me give a shit about him. It's just like, oh, I, I, I my favorite hero is Superman. So I like mm. characters with clear defined morals. Mm. I'm not. I, I think because my life, everyone's life is full of shades of gray. I don't really like. While that's identifiable, I'm like, I want. A, an ideal to strive towards yeah. to steal from Man of Steel yeah. like it's like I don't know if you're gonna have a role model have one with like good morals mm-hmm. yeah like, no that, that's fair enough that's how I see it and that's like I love Winter Soldier the movie so pre- predictions for Infinity War everyone dies Slash everyone no one dies. dies because of the time stone <laughs> <laughs> like, even you... without the Infinity Gauntlet the time stone fucks everything up like, I was thinking the other day, like, what if Doctor Strange resets the entire timeline? Like, you know the thing about how... <laughs> the fucking movie never happened. In the next movie, Doctor Strange is like, nah, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> it resets the timeline. That's great. Resets the timeline. Disney just re-release Iron Man 1 as a remake. As the next movie. And recast, <laughs> and recast everyone and just oh starts again. No, <laughs> same script and everything. Yes, shot for shot. People would still watch it, that's a sad thing. Yes. Yeah. That'd be incredible. People wouldn't like it, but they'd still watch it. They'd still go, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. Um, I hope that's what they do. But yeah, uh, I had a point, but I don't remember. Yeah, I, I feel a... like some people are going to die. And some of them are going to be permanent, a lot of them aren't. I have a feeling <laughs> Peter's going to die, but then I can think he's going to be brought back because Peter Parker's a moneymaker. I have mixed mm. feelings about um, what's going to happen in the future with all of this as well. Like, Going after because, Avengers well, 4. Well, after this, yeah, after Avengers 4, they're probably, if, if this whole contract goes through and Disney ends up with an X-Men well, yeah. and Deadpool. And, yeah, so many yeah. things. Fantastic Four. Um, Fantastic Four and all that. Um, if Disney ends up with that, 
I don't know how they're going. Like, because... they're not going to start it in that phase. And phase four, it's going to be a still Marvel. Like, they'll, they'll they'll do Avengers, something. Completely it'll different. still be an Avengers they'll start series. Again. If they're smart, if they get the X Men license, they put X Men to bed for five years. Yeah, and I think the they point, like he talked like Kevin Feige has talked about. I had no interest. Like no, no, no interest because like, he's always wanted to do it because he started off with the X Men movies. Yeah, and then he's like, try and make a cinematic universe. He's like, what the like the the bigger people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? Because it's never been done before. Yeah, and now he's one of the richest dudes in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he, so yeah, going forward, he's like, well, if that happens. Cool, but I'm focusing on his my plan. Like Spider Man, I think was part of the plan, but also not because like the the Civil War writer said he's always was part of the script. Like while that may be true, you easily wrote around it so that he could have been slotted in or out. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. You, you can you can take Spider Man. You you can you can easily insert any like vaguely known superhero into the Spider-Man slot and it works and it, you don't even need like not even like a slot in slot out just slot out nothing changes in that movie uh, the yeah. only thing that does change is how you take down Giant Man yeah and, and like I think the I think the battle needs like that extra person to make it fair yeah I think he's the the, the add on and so like like I said like all they needed to do is like if they didn't have Spider-Man just take him out and put in someone else yeah. like just find someone else that would that would fit that comic book people would be okay with yeah you just be like, okay, he's now an Avenger. Like, okay, cool. That's yeah. fine. Um, I think Black Panther was originally going to be that, but then they added Spider-Man on top of that. Okay. Um, but anyway. Oh, Black Panther. Um, uh, what was the point? Theories. The movies afterwards are confirmed. Spider-Man Homecoming 2. Mm-hmm. That's the first movie. Like my, Homecoming um, 2 is a weird name. They're a, not going to call it that. It's uh, a weird name say, for a movie. Like, <laughs> what? Why would you, like, just call it Spider-Man... Plot twist, Peter Parker Spider-Man gets goes to college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The next movie will be his next Spider-Man the college years. That was another really cool twist about that movie, is, like, right at the end, it's like, oh, my name is Michelle, or you could just call me MJ. MJ. And everyone was like... Because <laughs> 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 there was always, like, that low-key flirting there, but you're like, oh, yeah, she's just some bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You rewatch that movie, you realize she's stalking him. Yeah. Like... The whole time. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, going forward... There's a Black Widow pseudo confirmed, like someone's writing it. There are mm-hmm. people who keep talking about Black Widow, like whether it's a female team up movie or not. Mm-hmm. Like that movie is happening. So, and then Guardians Volume Three is announced for 2020. Yeah, obviously. Like, yeah. James Gunn's been that, talking that, about that. That story's got to end. Yeah. I, I I hope that story ends with a. I hope they go in a different direction. I want to see more of Drax or more of Groot or yeah. more of someone else. Yeah. Star Lord can. Star Lord's a great character, and he's done. Ver- Chris Pratt plays him very well. Yeah. Just fuck off. <laughs> Don't need more of you in the movie. Yeah. yeah. You just come by, have some quips. That's fine. Yeah. You do you. Bro. I don't want another movie about him. He'll still be have probably the most screen time in like life. Probably. But you can still do that without like, and still have a movie about other things. Yeah. And like going forward, James Gunn is kind of going into like the. The kind of a producer role in terms of going phase four onwards is going to be more cosmic y, which is yeah. why he set up Adam Warlock, which is why he's done like, yeah, why? What is that again? Adam Warlock, Adam Warlock is a key player in Infinity War, the comics, or the Infinity yeah. Gauntlet. He is the soul stone, I believe. Yeah, that uh, sounds right. Yeah, uh, I believe or like in the comics, yeah, but it probably won't be the case in them. I don't know. Like, no, I don't honestly think so. don't know. Wait, I don't is think the soul stone so. the one we don't know where it is? Yes. I think that will be mm. someone though. Like if Adam Warlock is, I, I probably I'm hazy on the detail. Like he could either is or has something. Re- he, he's intrinsically tied to the Soul Stone in the Gauntlet because the Soul Stone is the one that's still missing. The the, yeah. the um, theory I keep on seeing going around and Nina keeps on bringing up, which is like, ah, <laughs> oh, it's really cool. But I don't think it's just that really. It's yeah. not really that cool. But basically, <laughs> it's like, oh, the Soul Stone is in the is is the planet that Thanos is on. I'm like one. It has to be fucking smaller than a planet to fit on a goal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, the, the Soul Stone... Like, oh, I could be in the centre, and I'm just like, it's... From yeah. everything <laughs> I've read, the Soul Stone is most likely in Wakanda. That's what it's I believe. somewhere like, in Wakanda. It's either, like, I... Because there's no reason for there to be a giant fuck-off battle yeah. in Wakanda. Vision's you could have there. that anyway. They're hiding Vision there. They're hiding Vision there? And he's an Infinity Stone. I don't know. That shot from Vision, like, where Vision's getting fucked up... Yeah. ...doesn't seem to be in Wakanda... 
it um, might unless be. it's in the the lab. Maybe, but, but I I get the feeling that I get the feeling that the the soul stone is somewhere in Wakanda. It's like it's it's people think that it comes in on the meteorite. Yeah, that it's Probably tied. Uh, the, uh, uh, the vibranium t- comes from a meteorite, um, and lands and things like that, like vibranium, because it's a thing that uh, the it's a metal from another planet. That's why it's like so good. And Wakanda is the like world's leading like it's the only place you can get my brain yeah only place you can get it because um, it came from it hit there yeah whereas and then there's um people think that the soul stone is what makes that metal so cool or it's just in the meteorite as well and they just haven't gotten I don't know if it's in the meteorite I think it's just there because like Wakanda feels like a much more magical mystical place than anywhere mm. else on earth I feel like it's just there somewhere yeah um as part of like may- maybe it's like part of one of their like statues or somewhere yeah. or something like there but i feel like it's there somewhere um or <clears throat> my other theory about it is that it is n- like it's n- nowhere we've seen yet yeah and it will it will appear either in the movie for the first time or it won't get found until the next one. Yeah. Oh, I oh think. i know what it'll be full rock up he'll have the soul stone he'll have it behind his eye patch because <laughs> <laughs> every fucking Infinity Stone, <coughs> except for the purple one. I can't remember what it's called, but it's in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Pretty much every other um, Infinity Stone has been in the hands of Thor. At some yeah, point. Thor has dealt with a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, sucks, because if his movies were better, he'd be seen as almost the Keeper, or like, something to do with the Infinity Stones. Like, and he is, but like, we don't see Thor as that. No. And like, well, I think that's because most of the time, it just, it's just I Loki, always, and yeah. Loki rocks up with this shit. And yeah, yeah like, and Thor's gonna yeah. take him and his stupid kid brother back yeah. with, <laughs> with his fucking toy. Just Again. like, come on. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I've always seen Thor as like, that. Like, I've always seen Thor as the gateway for the regular world into the universe. Yeah, no, like, I He's always that. been that character. Yeah. Of like, oh shit, there is way more happening out there yeah. than just your shitty little world wars and yeah. fucking global warming you pieces yeah. of shit um that's why a lot of people are like you guys fought each other like you guys had a stupid squabble um i was i my planet died my like my everything my whole entire existence got turned upside down yeah i'm looking forward to it yeah mm. my prediction for the movie is that it will be good It'll be good at the very least. I'm keeping my expectations... I'm trying to keep my expectations low oh, so I, I don't hard. walk out. <laughs> but it's really hard because the game is so good. I'm yeah. just really excited for Thor to, for that scene where Thor's like, who are you guys? And then it's the Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah this, is, this is what I was saying about, like, I'm, I'm afraid about the pacing. Because there's, like, not just, oh, they've got to get to, like, Wakanda. There's that whole thing where they've got to, like, bring the Guardians in. Yeah. And, like... Yeah, because no one they, knows about it, the Guardians yet. It took them a whole fucking movie... To get just the regular Avengers to like trust each other. Yeah, now we're just gonna slot in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, yeah. and be like, it's gonna be fine. It's super weird as well because this would be the first time Peter's gone back to Earth since yeah. he was a little yes. kid. Yes, yes. Since he was kidnapped. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is really weird because you'd think, I've got a spaceship. <laughs> and also, he probably feels there's nothing there for him. I mean, like, well, I, think there, but I think it's implied time. that he was he was on the ship with. Yondu for, for a long time and yeah. wasn't able to do his own thing. Yeah, I know. And only recently got out. And then at that point, I'm not sure he knows where Earth is. Yeah. Yeah. Specifically. Yeah. yeah. And well, also, I, like, I would, I would to sort of want to, to like, yeah. I would sort of like want to mm. see it. Even yeah. if I'm like, oh, I don't care about it. I'd still want to be like, oh, right, okay, that's where it is. Cool. Yeah. All right, I'm going again. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's nothing to say that he wasn't and just doesn't bring it up. Yeah. Because, like I said, like, it, it's implied that. He has been out on his own for a little bit, but not necessarily that long. Yeah. So maybe he hasn't had time. Maybe he doesn't have the resources. And I, I generally think he has no idea yeah. where Earth is. Maybe that's why, like after super ego, like yeah. fighting with his dad, maybe I he's really, gained some knowledge and knows where it is. I really, yeah. really want to see him get those powers back at some point, but I don't think he will. But I would love to see. That. I think he will in the third. They sort of hint at it, like. While he doesn't have the powers, he has the ability to learn them. Yeah. And so he can probably start developing them. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I feel like that'll do. Anyway, I think this one's it's gone. It's like Ultra Instinct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, fuck yes. Oh, I hate that trope for me. This yeah, one's gone. gone for quite a while, so. Yeah. Hour 45, those are our thoughts on Infinity fuck. War. <laughs> and many Marvel stuff. I, okay, I thought... Yeah. All the Marvel things. Marvel thinks... Marvel's... It turns out it's a big universe. It is. 
We didn't even talk about the TV show. So, what do you think? <laughs> <No. laughs> Fuck off, no. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe and hit the bell. If you have any questions for the show, please uh, email us at amalgamtow at gmail.com. Oh, oh, no, no. <laughs> I hate you. It's amalgamshow at gmail.com. Um, or comment below. Um, anything else? Check out our other shows if we launch them this week. I'm not sure what we're doing. I think we might leave them this week, but check out the channel for updates. We are doing changes. Mm-hmm. Changes are happening. Yep. 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 Yay. Until next time. <laughs> Catch you guys later. Bye. Bye. I'm hungry. <laughs>